When you're not getting work, you need to make work. When you're not getting clients, you need to be your own client. My speculation is that most successful illustrators to get their career started in order to really break out was they needed to create a daily project that they made and dedicated themselves to. Hello, my name is Tom Froze and I'm an illustrator and a top teacher on Skillshare where I've helped tens of thousands of students unlock the world of commercial illustration. So welcome to the channel. Today in this episode, I'm going to do something a little bit different. And it's because I feel like this channel was started by connecting more directly with my audience and it was really based out of people asking me questions and I wanted to just answer them very directly in the videos and I would normally just answer the questions unscripted. I would just hit record on like my phone or my iPad or whatever I had and answer it. You can go and look at like my first episodes on this channel and you'll see that that's exactly what's happening. It's very raw. And over the years, I feel like I've tried to level up in the production quality of this channel. And so, you know, getting better camera equipment, better audio equipment, um, just becoming better at speaking to a camera and stuff like that. And I think for the most part, it's been for the better. But what has been lost, and I'll admit this, is that I've kind of gone from the, these more off the cuff, just speaking from my heart kind of things, to mostly scripted material because I bought a teleprompter and I type out my scripts and then I just read them and it saves me a ton of time in both recording and feeling like I'm saying the right words and in editing and I just have a lot less junk to remove from the videos. So yeah, I, I don't want to be just a talking head, some guy on YouTube lecturing at you. I don't want to just be telling you what I think or what my opinions are. In some of my research for some of the like classes that I've been trying to write, uh, one of the things that I've been doing is I go to other people's classes and, and watch them and, and see what it feels like. And so I've been doing this a lot for an upcoming class and a book that I'm writing about the illustration process. And we can talk about that some other time. But what I realized is not only is this topic about the illustration process super boring, um, when, when you just kind of talk about it matter of factly, when other people try to tell what they know on this subject, and I respect them for trying and for doing it, they do a good job given the material, uh, they're just talking at me. Uh, that's what I felt like. And, and so as I'm trying to figure out a way of talking about this topic in a way that's not just talking at you and giving you something that, you know, I'm it's just more engaging and, and something that you'd that you'd really want to engage with in terms of content. That's that's kind of what I want to bring to today's episode. So today's episode is really just me checking in with you guys and saying hi, being a little bit more vulnerable. And my fear is always that I'm going to ramble and babble, which I do. That's why that's like the main benefit of scripting my content. I, I, I ramble a lot less. So. What am I going to do today? I want to just go through some of the comments that I get from you guys. It just, they, they come in on my videos. I wish I got more of them, but the ones that do come in, I, I do answer as much as possible in a, in a comment. But I, th I thought I'd just kind of go through some of these comments with you guys and just talk about maybe, you know, how I would answer a question. And I also want to celebrate and read some of the very kind things that people write to me. I think that's another important thing to acknowledge is a lot of you guys are writing me really kind notes, telling me how this channel and how my classes are helping you. And it means a lot to me. And I, I want to take this opportunity also just to acknowledge that and let you guys know that. So here we go. Let's um, jump over to my, um, this is just, you know, the view that I have in the back end of YouTube here. And I can read through the comments that um, you guys send me. So that's a better view. Okay. And I have this fancy thing that I'm using right now where I can I can record and play around with what's on my screen stuff. It's called StreamYard. And 
it's it's kind of cool. So I'm, I'm playing around with this too. Again, just trying to level up the production quality. Now, the, the, the downside of this is that it's, um, it only records to sort of like standard quality. So it will be a bit grainy when I post this up to YouTube. But anyway, enough about that. Let's let's get on with the content here. The first comment here came in actually today and it's from Agata and she says, thank you for your advice. I created a sample of my work for a specific brand and I wanted to attach it as a teaser in my portfolio in email, but I was reading somewhere that the attachments are not good because of filters. It may go to spam. Any suggestions? It would mean a lot. Thank you in, ad in advance. Best wishes. So she's responding to a video I made a long time ago called Approaching Art Directors and Getting Real Work, which is a big, big pain point for beginning illustrators. And so I would just say, yes, it's true that attachments can go into spam filters, but not always. So it is worth trying. I mean, if you have one or two of your favorite images that you want to include in your email and they're, they're relatively small, they're not going to like bog down the recipient's email, email account, then tr try sending them, you know, in a considered way. But if you want to avoid that, um, this is what I do when I send anything to my clients is I post my illustrations or my work or whatever it is, the files up to the cloud and I have a Dropbox account. You can use Google Drive, you can use um, iCloud, something like that. I use Dropbox and I just send a link. And so you can send links as far as I know to any email address and it won't get filtered out uh, because it's not an attachment, it's just a link. So it's just one thing that I would recommend you try. And uh, I thank you for your question, I got hope that helps. Okay, so the next question is from someone whose name is in Cyrillic and I can't read Cyrillic or Russian characters, so I'm just gonna read the comment here. Thank you so much for sharing your experience. This is very helpful, keep going. And uh, I love little comments like that, even, even just like, thank you, I like what you're doing here. Those kinds of comments really mean a lot to me. So I really appreciate you taking the time to write that. And I'm gonna keep going. And the next comment is from Draw it Out Lady. And she says, two A's, eight B's, I'm tired of telling people to make ugly crap. That's in response to my previous, my most recent episode where I, I gave you guys a quiz it's like a five minute quiz, illustrator versus designer, which one should you be? If you're on the fence of trying to figure out which one you feel like you want to pursue as a career, I highly recommend you take that quiz. It's episode 80, uh, one of my more popular episodes lately. So yeah, please go check it out. But um, this is the response I gave to her. And I just said, thanks for sharing. And yeah, if you feel people are telling you to make stuff and you have to do it, they tell you something's not working. Hopefully you find a way to turn that lead into gold. Don't give up. So yeah, thanks again, Draw It Out Lady for sharing that. And what I, what I meant in my response here is that, yes, yeah, sometimes we get people requesting us to do something that we disagree with. But one of my biggest messages for illustrators and the heart of a lot of the content that I make is we don't just draw pictures. We help solve problems for our clients. You know, we don't just draw for a living any more than a writer types on a keyboard for a living. They write, they have ideas and the, the keyboard or the typewriter is just the tool. For us, the pencil or drawing is just the tool. The thing that we really provide to our clients is our ideas and our and really we share our creative process with them and maybe this is more what i'm getting at is you know we don't just draw pictures for our living we guide our clients through our creative process we have the creative process they don't we're going to plug them into it and walk them through it and all this to say it really is on us as the illustrators to not make ugly stuff so when the client says, here, make this ugly thing, our job is to transform that request and interpret it in a way that 
it elevates it to something more than ugly and hopefully something beautiful. So uh, that's that's really um, an important thing, an important message in a lot of what I'm saying. So I hope that helps. And I hope you find a lot of success turning those those kind of lower requests into higher results. So good luck with that. Okay, so another comment that came in, this one's from Ashu and they say, hello, Tom, I love watching your videos. Watching your videos is like meeting a long distance mentor. So first of all, thank you very much, Ashu. That's a, a very high compliment. I appreciate it. And Ashu continues, I'm a career switcher from IT world and yet unaware of the creative world. I have a question here. And I should say this is in response to the, the quiz, Illustrator versus D Designer, which are you? And he has a question. And it, he says, is it possible from the beginning to know that if one is a designer or an illustrator? Or does the route have to be taken from design and then to illustration? So that's how I interpret Ashu's question. And here was my response. So I said, there is no set path toward illustration. I started in a, in a career in IT myself, and that's true, that's a part of my story. And design was for me a natural and much desired career to switch into for me. And when and then from there, I found illustration. So if you're uncertain where exactly you should go next, I would just say don't make any rash decisions. You know, maybe you can stay in IT as your base camp, while you explore and build up your creative side and figure out the design and illustration question. So if you're in IT and that's your established career and you really have no idea what you're going to go into, you're probably not ready to leave your IT career. Um, when I left my IT career, uh, things were pretty ripe for me. I knew exactly what I wanted to get into. It was just a mat matter, not of what, but of how and when. How is it going to happen and when? So I never recommend anyone jump out of something that they worked hard to get to, and that's working for them now for something that's an uncertainty. I don't recommend that ever. The only time I would recommend that it's good to jump into uncertainty is when you are convicted and convinced about all the other things uh, in order to make that leap, which means you, you're, con you're convinced that this is really what you want. You've done your research. You know what it, it's, it's, it's not that you are jumping into total mystery. The mystery is what will happen, not what are you getting into. So figure out what you want to get into and figure out what the path to that is, and then think about how to make that transition over there. So I hope that helps, Ashu. I really appreciate your comment, and um, I'm more than happy to mentor you from a distance over here, and I wish you all the best. So the next question here comes from Deepika Gosai, and she says, Thanks, Tom. I really needed this. So again, this is in response to my previous episode. I've just been feeling like if you don't have a stable job, you're labeled as a wanderer with no direction. I was an interior designer and my results tally six A's. But after you discussed it further, I realized I'm more of an illustrator and I think I need to embrace it and explore the unpredictability. So thanks, Deepika, for that. Now, I should explain if you haven't watched the last video. So there are 10 questions, and there are two possible answers. And A answers tend to be more designer-oriented answers, and B tend to be more illustrator-oriented answers. When, if you got all Bs, for instance, you're, 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 the quiz is supposed to tell you that you're more disposed to illustration than design. So this person says, she got six A's, so she's kind of more, a little bit more on the design side than illustration. And now she's just saying that she feels after, after kind of watching the video to its end, where I explain what the answers mean, she feels actually maybe it, she is more of an illustrator. And so, yeah, I mean, maybe what your comment here is that if you leave your interior design job, which seems to be what you've, you've where you're coming from, that pro that 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 period of trying to figure out what you're going to do next, you know, maybe you're afraid of being a wanderer, you're afraid of looking like you're not doing anything productive, according to other people. And I would just say, you be your own judge, right? Um, if you know what, where you're going, and, and you know that you need the space apart from your established career and in interior design, in this case, and you need to not be doing anything while you're developing your illustration skills or whatever, 
you know what you need to do. Don't worry about what other people are thinking. Of course, be open to um, wisdom of, of friends and family or mentors or anyone that you feel should have a say in, or at least some input into your life. Don't close yourself off to good, good advice. Uh, and certainly don't take anything that I'm saying as, as the be all end all, uh, because I certainly don't know your particular situation. So I would just say, hang in there. And if you dream of being an illustrator, hold on to that dream and push yourself to just develop and explore and have fun along the way. So thanks again. Okay, we're going to go down to the next question. But before that, I'm going to have a sip of coffee because I've been talking for a long time. I'll just, um, I'll just remind you guys that th these videos are boosted in the YouTube algorithm by being liked and the channel's boosted when people subscribe. So if you're getting anything out of this content today, please give it a like. And if you like my content in general and want to always know when a new video comes up and see me in your feed more often, then please subscribe and sign up for notifications. I would really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, so let's go to Renata's uh, comment here. And this is from my video that I posted uh, a few months back called where do illustration ideas come from, which is another pet topic of mine. So she says, oh my gosh, I've been binge watching many of your videos. So thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. I love this video so freaking much. Finally, things are clicking in terms of how to get illustrations down to paper. I see that style is only a part of making a strong illustration. I super appreciate your perspective and way of explaining complex concepts. So I really appreciate that, uh, Renata. And yes, ideas don't just, you know, they, I mean, they don't usually just come out of your head and land on the paper through your drawing hand and they're fully formed. I, I have almost never had a good idea come right away. Anytime I did think I had an idea and I put it down, it didn't look so good once I got it out and it needed work. It's kind of like when you have something that you think is funny in your head and you're laughing about it and you try to explain it to someone else and you realize you haven't really been, you, you can't, you haven't developed it for other people's consumption yet. And, and that's, that's kind of like what ideas are. You know, you may have a seed of an idea or an inkling, but it takes a lot of work to form and shape it and turn it into something that other people will get and understand and um, that will ultimately have the impact that you want to have as the illustrator. So thanks, Renata. And Renata uh, chimes in again on uh, my previous episode, the illustrator versus designer one. And she says, thank you so much, Tom. I got four A's and six B's, almost 50-50. I think this quiz was highly accurate for me. I'm a designer by day, which tends to be very logical and idea driven and less personal because I'm more focused on the client. By night, I'm creating my personal illustrative artsy type of work. I do want 100% credit for my art and care about the aesthetic expression parts. I feel like my experience with design makes me a stronger artist. However, I feel like I want to get more comfortable drawing different things. Anyway, your content is top notch and always I always find it super helpful. Thank you for all that you do. Uh, thank you so much for your comment, Renata, and you're you're very welcome. And I'll just say that this quiz was something I made up. It's not like, you know, scientific or anything like that, but I've been enjoying seeing how people have engaged with it and how people have found it helpful. And I, I suppose there's nothing kind of like it out there, on, at least on YouTube right now, just a sense of like how to place yourself between these two very specific jobs, illustration or illustrator or designer. And I think one of the things that I, I'm, I feel like I wanted to do with this quiz was it wasn't about the actual creative. There's no mention in this quiz of whether you like using Illustrator or Photoshop or Procreate or whether you like working in gouache or whether you like working with fonts. Uh, it's much more about your personality and how your personality can really determine what kind of career you'd fit most in. And, and I found that for me, 
I definitely have a lot of designer type traits in me, but I also have a lot of illustrator type traits in me. Uh, and these go far beyond the, the creative stuff. It's just more about like what, what, what's interesting to me in the higher level sense. Like, do I like solving problems or do I prefer to just fin finesse details and, and make things look good? And I, I am actually a little bit of both of those things, but these are things that um, you're going to be doing more of, you're going to be doing more of these types of things uh, one or the other in one of these careers, illustration or design. And so it's good to just to know which one will satisfy that itch that you have more. So that's really um, maybe a comment in, re in relation to this, this episode. And there will be more comments on this episode because it is a recent episode and it's actually gotten more comments than most of my other videos of late. And I've learned that if you actually ask people an engaging question they'll answer so lesson learned cassia stefanska says five a's and five b's who am i she says but seriously this confirms that i should pursue animation which i think combines work uh, the work of illustrators and designers the best thanks so C cassia i appreciate your comment there and man i i hope that i really hope that the quiz is accurate to some degree i hope that it really does help you but of course you know i'm not a fortune teller and i'm not a career counselor and i don't know you but i i, I really hope that you can kind of see for yourself what these answers tell you as a reflection of what you really want to do so thanks for your, your feedback there elizabeth webb says thanks tom i got seven b's and three a's which is interesting i've been a designer for a few years but would love to do more illustration and of course, I tell her, you know, like the results from this quiz show your temperament more than anything. If design is what you like doing, then you can just approach it in a way that more suits your illustrator's temperament. So if you have some illustrative tendencies, you can bring that into design. It doesn't mean you have to be an illustrator. And um, that's kind of what I do. Like I, I'm, I say that I'm an illustrator with a designer soul or something like that. Or you could put it the other way around. I'm a designer with an illustrator soul. Like I bring a little bit of design of my designer tendencies into what I do as an illustrator. Okay, so Jackie says, I knew before even clicking on the video that I'd be an illustrator and your quiz certainly confirmed it. Nine Bs and one A. I noticed that some of my dream projects skirt the line between graphic design and illustration, like cover art or posters, for example. I feel like as an illustrator, I could definitely stand to learn more from design practices and conceptual thinking. I'm still trying to break out of the draw what you see mode from when I was just learning how to draw. So thank you, Jackie, for your comment i'm i'm with you like i i totally relate i i definitely like projects that kind of are in the middle of illustration design i mean one of my favorite kinds of illustration and dream projects would be to do like a, a mural for a big brand like um i think of i don't know just like name your big i i just think of like a big maybe interior like a a fun office interior and they want me to like illustrate the walls or maybe something out on the outside of a building, but I imagine the illustration not being quite like character driven or like narrative or anything like that. It's more like abstract and it's, it's more about feeling or some bigger idea. And it's more of a chance to play with uh, abstract shapes and colors. And I love that kind of thing. And it is one thing that I aspire to. And, and it definitely brings together the, the, that design and that illustrator side for me as well. So Estefania Lopez Escobar says, I got five and five. So is it possible to be both and make work that combines these two? How can we expand our expertise when you have half and half? Could that affect the possibility to find my style as an illustrator or even my artistic voice as a creative? Always so grateful for all the knowledge and passion you share. So thank you, Estefania. My response was just, you know, of course it's possible to, to be both designer and illustrator for sure. You know, you want to take the quiz that I made and your results with a grain of salt. You know, let it give you more insights about, about you and who you are, whatever the results are you can still choose to focus on one or the other, even if you feel like you're in the middle too. And so I just kind of send the question back to you. 
what do you think your results are telling you, right? So I'm not here to tell you what to do. And I'm not saying my, my, my quiz is the, the authoritative thing to determine these things. And ultimately, you can use it as a tool to uh, know yourself better. So let's keep going. Tony Gajadar says, Tom, thank you so much for all the hard work you put into making your content. You're welcome, Tony. I really appreciate that. This video was great and couldn't come at a better time for me. Currently a graphic design, I'm currently a graphic designer, but I'm really struggling to stay with it. I got nine Bs and one A, that, and I needed that confirmation. Much love all the way from Trinidad and Tobago. So thank you, Tony, for, for your comment. And uh, I believe this is my first uh, comment from Trinidad and Tobago, so that's awesome. So this question uh, comes from Simeon Goa, and again, this was in response to the Illustrator versus Designer quiz episode. And he says, because you started in design and then transitioned into illustration, do you have any tips or resources for those who are doing or considering doing the same? And I said to him in a re re response, um, and this is something I actually said to another person with a similar comment, on that video, I said, as a designer, you'll have many opportunities to include illustration in your designs or where illustration is needed, you, you, you can volunteer for the position yourself. Then you, be, you wanna be sure to show as much of your work on your portfolio in a way that showcases your illustration side as much as possible. But this might be a great subject for an entire video. Thanks again, Simeon. So uh, I kind of, stuttered around my answer here but really what i'm saying is um people are trying to transition into illustration and they're experiencing this sort of experience paradox where you need work on your portfolio to attract clients but you need to attract clients to get that work in the first place and and so what you need to do along the way and you're actually in a good position as a designer to do this is try to get as much illustration into your design work as possible. And when you can do that, and when it's possible, volunteer for the illustration position yourself. And so I did a lot of this um, as a designer, as an art director, I always enthusiastically brought illustration into my projects and quickly became the go-to person wherever I ended up working when I was an employee at design jobs, I I was the go-to person for illustrations. So I was already illustrating, not, not great illustrations, but I was doing it before I was an illustrator. And when I went to freelance as a designer, I, uh, my, my, my goal was yes, to end up freelancing as an illustrator. That was my dream. But my strategy was to um, take on design work but show it in a way that made me look more like an illustrator. And so anytime I had uh, any illustration at all involved in a project, I would show that illustration on the front page of, you know, on the cover of that project in my portfolio, rather than the designy part, whether it may, like if I designed a, a magazine or a website, for instance, I wouldn't show the, the magazine or the website. I'd show some of the illustrations that I did that were in it. And it, is, it was just kind of by making those tweaks and adjustments and biasing my portfolio toward illustration in that way that I think really did help uh, people coming in and stumbling upon my website. Um, if they didn't know what I did, that's what they would see. And then they might ask me to do illustration. Another component of this was, was anytime I did an illustration, I would also try and promote it. I'd try and get it blogged. Now this was back in the day when like design blogs were a thing. Uh, one of my favorite blogs at the time was Design Work Life, and she actually showcased some of my projects. I believe a lot of the illustration projects that came were through posts of my illustration that ended up on these design blogs in this way. So you really just want to cast your illustration seeds out there so that people find them and your name is on them. And when they see it, they say, I want something like that, and they know who to call. So that's really a huge part of how I got the ball rolling. So I appreciate your comments and questions there, Simeon. Okay, so another comment here is from Taylor Debeer. 
And Taylor DeBeer says, lovely little quiz. Speaking on working alone, do you have anybody to bounce ideas off of? As a freelance illustrator, I always wondered if a person's agents are possible people you could get any initial feedback from. Now, the answer to this is I bounce most of my ideas off of my wife. And I actually feel the need to bounce ideas off of her less now than I used to. I feel like I was a lot less confident in my art and craft as an illustrator and in like what was working. And of course, having an outside opinion was always very helpful. And I would usually turn to my wife, who's an art director and designer herself. And so I trust her opinion and she, I just, I, 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 I value her opinion, even when hers is different than mine. And we do differ a lot sometimes, but she, she was always a good sounding board. And one of the things I like to say is like, if it makes my, like if I'm making an illustration that's meant to have some humor in it, uh, if it makes my wife laugh or chuckle, that's the one I want to use because, you know, secretly, you know, that's, that's all I care about is it does, does the illustration make my wife laugh? Not does it solve the client's problem? Of course I'm being facetious, but there is some truth to that. So my goal is to be as independent as possible. I don't want to be dependent on other people's opinions all the time. I want to be my own judge of things. And I think we need to have that independence. There is a, um, a point where you're too dependent on what other people think. And this is very evident on work that we post to social media, right? Like when we post a video or a, an image, when we post an illustration to Instagram, our opinion of our own work will inflate with comments that it gets. If it doesn't get the engagement that we hope for, our value of the piece goes down. It deflates in value. And that's a really sad thing. But the antidote to that is perhaps practicing knowing what you value and going with your gut over what other people say. And I don't think there's actually any way around the social media thing where like, like when I post an illustration, I don't get the engagement I want. I think my piece kind of sucks. I don't think there's any way around feeling like that because the whole point of social media is to um, get those likes and, and to, to feel like you're, you're doing something right and you get that praise and those accolades and you, that's, that's what we're looking for. If we're honest, right? Yes, we want to share, but if what we share doesn't get reciprocated, of course, we're going to feel bad. So first of all, I wouldn't use Instagram as my tool for getting feedback mid process. But uh, so that would be an extreme. So if you do have someone you trust, like a husband, or a partner or uh, a good friend or a crit group, someone or some people who you trust to see your work mid process or your concepts before you're ready to kind of pick your best ones. That's always a very good thing to do. So I do recommend you do that. And then your goal should be to be independent uh, and have a vision and a perspective and a sense of what's right for your own work. Over time, I believe that's something that we should aspire to. So thank you, Taylor, for your question and for your comment. Okay, and we're going to just keep going here. Um, Noelia, Noelia says... Great video, Tom. Thank you. Well, I'm not an illustrator nor a designer, but I'm really interested in illustration, even though the quiz says I'm more suited for being a designer. But I have a question. In my country, there's no illustration as a career. So I guess I should just study design? Question mark. Will this help me to try illustration in the future? And I said to her, thanks, Noelia, for your, uh, for your comment and question. Illustration exists globally, so there is a chance that you could illustrate for clients outside your country, at least I would think. I don't know what sort of, I don't know what country you're in or what restrictions are there. Um, maybe there's some kind of illustration embargo, I don't know. Of course, design is a close cousin of illustration, so if you feel like you'd be in a, if you feel like you want to be in a creative career and design's more of an option, then, then go and do that. You know, design's a great alternative, and, and you know, personally, I think that you will be a stronger illustrator if you first start. 
as a designer. That has been my experience. So yeah, thank you, Noelia, for your question. Okay, so this next question comes from Strategio Pro US. And they say, Tom, I don't know if you're going to read this, but I need help. I'm naturally an illustrator, but went designer, went to be a designer because it seemed most practical at the time. I just illustrated a book cover for a client. How can I land more jobs of this nature? So to answer this person's question, I give the same answer that I gave to Simeon, which is, you know, when you are illustrating and, it, and you need to have illustration, volunteer for the position yourself. And of course, show your illustrations as much as possible on your portfolio as you build that side of you up over time. So thank you, Strategio, for your question. Okay, so maybe today I'll, I'll stop at this last question from Athena Barkley. Uh, and actually, this is a, a question that I really wanted to answer today uh, before deciding to just read a whole bunch of questions and answer them all. So I appreciate it if you're sticking with me here. And um, this will be the last the last comment slash question that I read. And if you are enjoying this content, please be sure to give it a like. Let's get into this last question. This is actually a really important one. So a lot of this information is assuming that you have already taken on jobs, but what if someone has not had any jobs? Will the stuff in their portfolio be taken seriously? And how do you say what something is for if you just drew something that you like? So, my response to her is this, and I'll explain it more here today. So I say, hi, Athena, thank you for your comment and your question. You make a good point. There is a significant gap between job ready and experienced. The professional portfolio is almost by definition a showcase of experience rather than one of job readiness. And what I mean by job readiness is you grad, you come out graduating from a program, for instance, job ready, you have skills, you just need a job to start using them and gain that experience. That's what I mean by job readiness. Experience, of course, is actually having worked in a job and been on the front lines, so to speak. And so you have that experience. So I just continue my um, answer here. I say that it's not like you just one day have a portfolio ready to show, you know, most portfolios are quietly built up offline as illustrators amass experience here and there. But again, how do these early career illustrators get the experience they need in order to build up their portfolios? This seems like a good subject for an episode, doesn't it? So a little bit of a cheeky answer there, a little bit of a teaser, but yeah, I do want to actually create a whole episode about this paradox, what I'll call the portfolio paradox. You need a portfolio to attract clients, but you need to have work for clients to get work and show your experience on your portfolio. And of course, she has a secondary question here, which is how do you how do you add a rationale to an illustration on your portfolio when the only rationale was like you made it because you liked it? And that is, I'll get to that in a sec. So first things first here. So let's just talk about the portfolio paradox here. And so it really is about when you're not getting work, you need to make work. When you're not getting clients, you need to be your own client. My speculation is that most successful illustrators to get their career started, even if they came out of art school and had all the 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 opportunities in place in order to really break out was they needed to create a daily project that they made and dedicated themselves to they committed themselves to it they showed up every day and worked on this daily pro project and more than just making this work they shared it this is something i talk about in my class called the style class on skillshare and the whole class is actually based around this idea of the daily project so that you can actually work out your style. You can't work out your style um, just by thinking about it. You need to go and practice it and explore and experiment. In order to do that on a consistent basis, you need to set goals and have structure with that. And uh, similar to finding your style, actually just like making work that people recognize you for, making work that gets you discovered, you need to be making it all the time, be getting better at it. And there's no better way to do that than a daily project that you share online. That And that way you're, you're growing in front of people. There's a story to it. 
you're going to gain followers and fans right away, or at least over time. And you're going to um, just learn so much about yourself. And then out of the many, many images and works that you make, some of those will be actually pretty good. Hopefully more than just, just some, but at least some of them are going to be pretty good if you're dedicated to it and you're working on your skills and stuff like that. Those will be online and people will at least have an opportunity to come across them in some way, maybe on Pinterest or maybe through a hashtag on Twitter, just for instance. But now you want to get these things up on your portfolio. Maybe you have a portfolio site. Maybe you have a Behance portfolio or something like that. Now, your reason for making it might just be that you wanted to make it. You wouldn't have some elaborate brief like the client really wanted to, you know, increase their membership by 10%. And I worked with the design and strategy team to do blah, 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 blah. And the illustration did X, Y, and Z. Obviously, um, most people don't care about that kind of stuff. But wait, what I mean by you want to sh- you want to talk about what something is for is to give context to the illustration, to the image that you've made. And if the context was that it was part of a daily project, that's enough. That's enough. It shows that you're committed to making and growing, which is something an art director or a a potential client would actually value knowing. So I hope that helps. Yeah. You're not going to have, you're not going to have experience to show until you attract those clients and you're not going to attract those clients until you have some experience to show. So in the meantime, try to find a few of your favorite pieces, put those on your portfolio, put those on your social media, and and talk about how it's part of your daily project and just keep doing these kinds of things maybe spawn off different series in your daily project or different separate daily projects until you gain that momentum and people start noticing it there's really no other way to do it and of course don't be picky about your jobs i'll just say this last thing is like turn everything into an illustration project while you're waiting for your dream project you need to be just turning things into your dream project or steering them in that direction as much as possible. So Athena, thank you so much for your question. And thank you for giving me something to really cap off today's episode with, because this is a very important topic for new illustrators, the portfolio gap, it's super important. And just so you guys know, I will be um, coming up with a Skillshare class over the next few months. I don't know when, because these things always take way longer than I want them to, but it's, It's uh, not about the portfolio gap, but about the more about the experience gap. So a lot of illustrators, well, every illustrator starts off out of school with very minimal experience in working with clients. And what does it look like to start a project and step through a creative project with a client who's asking, who has certain demands for you? How do you do that while you also feel good about the art you're making? So you. You, I like saying, how do you make good work and happy clients? How do you make those two things happen at the same time? And so um, once you start having experience and you have a system in place, you learn how to do that quite well, or I hope you do. But um, before you get to that point, you kind of you kind of get lost a lot and you make a lot of mistakes and you get frustrated and it's it's you, you get self-doubt, you get anxiety. That's what my class is gonna be about helping people through. I haven't quite figured out the name of it. I haven't quite figured out all of the content. It's one of, again, every class I teach is the hardest class I teach. This is now the hardest class I've ever had to teach. And this one is hard because on paper, it's actually kind of a boring topic, but in practice, it's one of the most important things that you need to know. And when you know it, you will be a much stronger and much happier illustrator. So stay tuned for that and um, if you have any questions about working with clients about stepping through your creative process sharing your talent with people who are paying you to use that talent for them anything like that please let me know in the comments as you can see today i really value when you guys say what you're thinking asking questions whatever it is in the comments all right well i think that's it thank you so much for watching i hope that this content was helpful for you. Uh, For me, it was just a nice way of connecting with you guys again, reading your comments and remembering that I'm not just talking at a camera and I don't wanna just speak at you. I wanna, you know, connect. I truly wanna help uh, 
you guys break through in your illustration careers and show you some of the insights that I feel like I've learned. But I don't want to just be some some guy who thinks he knows everything. I really think that the content on this on this channel is about you guys, your questions, the things that you're really going through in my best effort to try and empathize and work through those with you. So again, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.